Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN AM for Thursday, September 8th, 2022. And our top story today, inflation affects discretionary spending, but not retirement preparations. Today's show is powered by Funding Our Future. To learn more about Funding Our Future, its members and its mission, visit fundingourfuture.us. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Christopher Flint is with USAA. Well, Chris, thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Great to be here, Jeff. Looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, and, and so USAA just released a survey. You know, it's uh, September's Life Insurance Life Insurance Preparedness, Preparedness Month. I can't even get it out. But one area that I wanted to talk to you about in terms of this survey is the impact of inflation on not only discretionary spending, but retirement and financial preparedness. You broke down the numbers. What can you tell us? Sure. You know, so this is uh, Life Insurance Awareness Month, as you mentioned already. Uh, this is the one time a year the industry comes together and really tries to tighten its focus around the importance of life insurance and protecting those that you love. Um, and uh, so as part of our, our effort to participate in increasing that awareness, uh, we conduct our, our own survey, and much like uh, the rest of America, uh, inflation is top of mind for, for most folks. Uh, it's also impacting the way um, people are uh, spending. So specifically, uh, it's affecting uh, discretionary spending. What we're not seeing, though, is that um, it's really having a material impact on spending around retirement planning, around life insurance, and even cybersecurity, those things that protect our identity as we are uh, operating more frequently on online. When we look across both our military and our civilian uh, connected, our, our civilian and military connected families, uh, 50 plus percent uh, have, have made spending cuts. But again, 20%, less than 20% of that same population are making cuts to, to those things that are important uh, as it relates to protecting the things that are important to them their family, their identity, their retirements. Uh, when you look across um, uh, the military connected families and civilians, um, the majority, so 59 plus percent of civilians, 70 plus percent of military families are worried that inflation will cut into uh, their, their retirement and their, and their life insurance plan. Yeah, I, I think a lot of us are tightening our belts. We've all experienced uh, high energy prices, high gas, uh, food prices, the supply chain disruption. Uh, Chris, in terms of let's let's just drill down for life insurance for a second. Uh, you said that you mentioned during the survey, your review of the survey results, that people didn't stop preparing for their financial theirs and their family's financial future. To what do you owe that? Is it is it are there lessons from the COVID pandemic? Are there other lessons that people? Can can are taking and saying, look, I've got to continue my retirement contributions. I got to continue making premium payments to my life insurance policy. Yeah, I, I, I certainly um, I certainly believe in the industry surveys and industry results suggest and support uh, this view. Right, the the pandemic in general uh, really heightened the awareness of life insurance. Uh, it helped um, many folks sort of reckon with their own mortality, if you will, mm -hmm. and really underscored the importance of making sure that you're prepared for the unexpected. Uh, and life insurance is certainly a, a key tool in that effort. What about household debt? Is there any difference? Um, you know, obviously, we've come through the pandemic, some concerns about jobs, concerned about inflation. How about managing household debts? How did, I'm going to call them civvies. How did civvies do versus the military connected families. And hopefully I'm not offending anybody. Sure. Well, uh, we're proud because we serve um, military service members here at USAA. And, and we are very proud of the fact that when we look at the uh, military connected respondents to our, our survey that we're discussing today, more than 25% of the military 
uh, uh, respondents were were more prepared and had sufficient uh, or, or um, adequate coverage uh, for debts and felt that they could replace five years of, of income. But by contrast, if you're just looking at it statistically, 53% of those respondents being our military connected individuals uh, were prepared uh, versus roughly 39, 40% of, of the civilians. Yeah, I, I wonder, again, going back to the pandemic, if people have said, look, we have to get our spending under control. They did a pretty good job. People, by and large, did a pretty good job during the pandemic. They paid down their credit card debt. My understanding is things have ballooned up a little bit when you look at some of the credit card surveys. But it seems like people, Chris, learned some really key lessons. No no question, right? Um, again, I'll just go back to... Um, you 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 can't always plan for the unexpected, but you can plan, and that might be your own mortality. That might be for uh, the loss of income. That might be for the loss of uh, retirement benefits, health benefits. And I think the pandemic has forced people to think differently about how prepared they are for these type of incidentals and unexpected events that happen from time to time. Yeah, Chris. Last question before we go to a commercial break. Uh, you talked about, you know, talking about our own mortality, you know, I would say before COVID, that was like a, a no-no. You really, we didn't really think about the end and, and COVID and some of the other events that have happened to us in the last two, three years have really crystallized that we're not going to be on the planet, all of us forever. And, and so being able to take care of our family, our loved ones, make sure we do proper estate planning, make sure that we had the proper life insurance and, and insurances with the right features, that that really is being addressed today. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, right? If you think about the pandemic uh, when it first emerged in the United States, you think about the impact it's had on uh, our own mortality, our own longevity. You think about the number of lives that were directly impacted by the pandemic in terms of uh, the, the, the death, uh, the number of deaths that we had across the United States. You don't have to reach too far to uh, know someone that was impacted in some way by this pandemic. And again, I think that has forced this uh, reckoning, if you will, uh, with our own vulnerability and our own uh, mortality. Yeah. In, in Chris, a way, this will prove to be. Sorry, Chris, I didn't interrupt long, you. Long term. Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was going to say, I want to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about long term financial planning, life insurance awareness month, and a lot more. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repair for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house 
and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back and a reminder that today's show is powered by Funding Our Future. To learn more about Funding Our Future, its mission and its members, visit fundingourfuture.us. And I'm joined this morning by Christopher Flint. Chris, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. My pleasure. Thanks, Jeffrey. Let's talk about long-term financial planning. Are we doing a good job educating our family members and our children about the importance of long-term financial planning, things like life insurance instruments? You know, it's, it's um, interesting. One of, the, one of the questions we had on the, on the uh, survey really brought some of this forward. Only 33% of civilian and 41% of military respondents who are parents have actually had discussions with their children about long-term financial planning. And it's interesting in the sense that, that money is seen as the most important instrument when passing wealth down to the family, both in civilians and our military connected uh, survey respondents. Yeah, and Chris, I wanna go back to something you, 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 we talked about when we talked about insurance. And I guess my question is why, why aren't people buying life insurance? I mean, what is the aversion to buying it? Is it a lack of education? Like we're talking about this long-term financial planning or is it just a general aversion when you when they hear the word life insurance, they duck and run? Yeah, it's um, you know price is still an issue. Uh, price perception is an issue uh, for both our civilian population and our our military uh, connected uh, survey respondents. Um, uh, most are report that they they feel that it costs too much. So twenty nine percent of our military think life insurance costs too much. Thirty one percent of our Civilians think life uh, insurance costs too much, or they think that they have sufficient financial resources uh, to cover any type of extraordinary expense that they, they might have as it relates to um, their health, disability, or, or life. Yeah, and that's why it's, I guess it's always important to go back and review what you have because your situation changes. You have children, you have a family, you have a, a spouse, et cetera. I, but I want to touch on something this aversion. Uh, is there just a lack of fundamental knowledge about the different types of life insurance? So you may think that life insurance is very expensive, but in reality, companies like USAA and, uh, and your peers are creating a whole new suite of products designed and tailored to this newer marketplace. Absolutely. Uh, if we think about life insurance in general, it's never been cheaper for someone to go out and buy term insurance. It's never been more important. Uh, for someone to go out and buy term insurance. Uh, it's an important part of any financial plan. Uh, it's important in terms of um, replacing uh, lost income through the loss of a primary income earner. It's important in, in covering any type of legacy debt that a, uh, a decedent leaves behind for uh, their, their, their family. Yeah, really, it's just part of that whole that holistic, look, I hate to use uh, some of these buzzwords, but it's true. It's holistic planning. It's not only getting to retirement, it's also what happens after retirement and being, being able to plan for the unexpected. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to having you and USAA back on the program again very soon. Absolutely, Jeffrey. I want to encourage uh, all your listeners to go out and visit us at usaa.com forward slash life survey for more details on some of the information that we discussed today. Thank you. That wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, entertainment, tech, so much more in all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, we'll visit our website and of course our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRN AM. 
Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.